Hey everybody, welcome back to another Slime Fun Tips and Tricks episode with your host Boomer and today we're going to answer one of the most commonly asked questions on the official Slime Fun Discord server. Can I set Slime Fun up in single player? The answer, no. Thanks for watching. Have a great day. Just kidding. Don't go anywhere yet. While it is true you cannot do it in single player, you can set up a Slime Fun server that you can play on your computer and everybody in your household that are on your home network can join you. This is not going to be a tutorial about how to make it public. I don't know how to do it. Don't ask because I'm not going to tell you. I don't know. But we are going to show you how you can set up a Slime Fun server so you can have all the same kind of fun that I do in my little world here in my house. Now, I would always recommend if you can do it on a second computer, but if you can't and you only have one, that's fine. We'll show you how to do that. Let's get started. First, you need to determine what type of server, spigot or paper. You cannot use bucket. Bucket is no longer uh, going to work. I would always, always take paper over spigot every single day. Uh, better performance optimizations. Um, I think it runs smoother from what I'm seeing. Uh, I think it's optimized for Minecraft very well. Not only that, I think they do a better job of updating their, their uh, software much faster than spigot does. Now, with paper, when Minecraft 117 comes out, you're going to have to make sure you have Java 11 or higher on your computer. Currently, it runs with Java 8, but at 117, if you don't update to Java 11, your server will not run. So here's how you first, before we even download paper, let's talk about getting a Java. Open up a command prompt by typing in CMD, hit enter. And what I want you to type in is Java space dash version. And what you'll see on my screen here is that I have Java version 11.0.8 .8 installed on this computer. I actually run Java 15 on my server that I use for my Slime Fun series. So I'm good to go. So if you are on Java 8 anything, you're going to have to get rid of it. I'm going to provide the link to Java 15 as well as all of these websites that we're going to see in the description. So you don't have to try and hurry up and snap a picture or write it down. Also, while you're here, I want you to type in ipconfig and hit enter. I can't show you mine for specific reasons, but what I want you to look for towards the bottom of the report is a line that says IPv4. This is your internet protocol address on your home network. It's most likely going to start either with 192 or 127. There'll be a series of four numbers. I want you to write them all down. So it might be 192.168.1.7, whatever that is. Write down all four numbers and then go ahead and close the command prompt. You're going to need that in two different places later. So when you are downloading versions of software for the server or for your plugins, always, always, always download the most recent version. Perfect example. 15 minutes ago, I was doing a test recording and 466 was the newest version. 467 just came back with two more fixes. Now you say, well, newer versions are going to have bugs. Yeah, occasionally they are. Devs aren't perfect. And sometimes they make mistakes. And sometimes there are unforeseeable tests that just cannot be done. It is impossible to test for every scenario that could exist when software is written. So please, get off the devs' backs. If you're one of those people that jumped on their backs, sorry, you need to shut up. You quit being an egotistical maniac. Most of the devs do it for free. They do it in their spare time. And they do it because they enjoy it. And they want it to be fun. And while they want the software to be perfect, you know what? A lot of them still go to school full-time or work full-time. They don't get paid to do this. None of them do. They do it for free. So show a little love and appreciation to the devs for even taking the time to do this in the first place. And not just slime fun, but all devs. All right. So you get the most recent bug fixes and the most recent security patches. So what you need to do, click on build, download it. There's your server right there. We've got it. All right. Now we talked about Java already. Let's talk about Slime Fun itself. I love when I see people post, I've searched the internet for days and I can't find out how to download Slime Fun. I typed in Slime Fun. Look what I got. If you go to the bucket, bucket one, it will provide you a link to this one, which is the real GitHub. Click on it. That was really tough to find it, wasn't it? Download Slime Fun 4. Always grab the development latest build. It is always the most recent up to date with bug fixes and security patches. It'll take you directly to the repository where it says download the jar right here. 
click on the jar file now you have slime fun you have everything you need to create your server you have the server you have slime fun and you have Java but what if you want to add some of the add-ons to slime fun Wow slime fun for add-ons here we go click the first link all right scroll down now a lot of times people ask me what do I have installed on my server would I please list it the answer will always be no because I've said it half a dozen times and I'm gonna do it again I have every official add-on installed on my server every one of these is on there every third-party add-on with the exception of sound muffler and clay tech clay tech is now officially abandoned if you are still running CS core library on your server which you should not be unless you want to keep clay tech everything CS core live is now officially abandoned you should not be running it which will disable clay tech because clay tech has not been updated since like 1922 so it's officially abandoned so I have every other one of those the only third-party plugin I run is sensible to a box that's it so you go through and if you want to know more about the specific plugin click on the github and it will take you to their official page and you'll get to learn about what is the exotic garden and sometimes they have more information like if you go to the now this doesn't have the wiki up here so this was one that definitely needs a wiki update okay unfortunately here there's not a whole lot you can find some things about the the bucket but it's a little old this is one that does need to be updated and they are looking for people to update the official wiki and at some point I'm probably gonna throw my name in the hat but we got a lot of people online very knowledgeable about the github or about exotic garden we'll be happy to answer your questions click on the builds right here download the official jar boom you now have exotic garden all right go back what if you want in addition to exotic garden you want uh, let's say whoop I went back a little far um, I want light expansion click on the builds click on the download jar keep it boom do this until you've got all the add-ons that you want you don't have to install everyone I'm doing it simply because I want to be able to feature and show and help you decide which ones you want to have for if you're a server owner or if you're playing single player or to tell you how some of these things work or at least point you in the right direction so once you've got them all let's go to our little server now before we start the server I want to show this file to you guys because I can't run it on camera um, here's what you want to create if you've downloaded 46 and actually I just downloaded 467 so I have to update that I'll leave this up here get a screenshot of this you're going to want to create this as your start file for your server because then you don't get the GUI that opens it runs in a command screen and a command window in the background and I think it runs the server a little bit better being in this module so get a screenshot so what this means is we're telling the Java environment I want you to start my server with a maximum of four gigabytes of memory if you're on a computer that's got 16 gigabytes up that to eight if you have eight on your computer leave it at four the minimum amount of memory to run is one gigabyte so we want you to load the jar file and this is the name of the server file this must be replaced with exactly what you downloaded if you downloaded 465 you've got to change it to 465 this does not mean nagwai it means no GUI do not load the graphical user interface you're going to do everything from a console instead and pause to just to wait a minute before you start the server okay here's how you get your server started first whoops and you can see I need to get rid of that and I also I actually have 466 here I downloaded it before uh, I recorded this so I'm actually going to backtrack to 466 for now just for the purposes of the tutorial but make sure this file matches exactly what's in a start.bat file or it will not run double click your paper file in about 10 seconds you're going to see a couple of files folders and a file or two appear you're looking for cache and I think the other one is logs and then you're going to see two files EULA and server the EULA is the end user license agreement which you must legally agree to and you are bound forever for as long as you shall live to follow so once that appears we're going to open up that file and configure it to let the server run in other words we're going to legally agree to the terms and conditions of running a Minecraft server so we're almost there should be just a few more seconds there it is 
So we've got server and EULA. We'll come back to server in just a moment. For now, let's open the EULA and you're going to change this false to true. You are now entering into a legal agreement with Moyang that you will follow all of their licensing agreement rules. Now, before we actually start the server up, we're going to go ahead and configure it here as well. Two things you can change. One is mandatory, one is optional. So if you ever log into a server and you see a message, this MOTD, the, the message of the day, we're going to put, this is a test server for SlimeFun. That one's optional. Let's go down to the one that's mandatory that you enter or you'll never connect. Remember I asked you to write down your IP address. This is the IP address of my computer on my network. It is not yours, most likely. Make sure it's the one that you copied from the IPv4 line. Close it, save it. Now, start your paper server again. And in about 15 to 20 seconds, you will see additional files and folders start as well as the actual server. Now this one is going to start with a GUI. There's no spawn, there's no world, there's no nothing. So it's going to start it. The second time we get started, we're going to start it with the bat file. But I want it to run completely on its own and download any remaining files to set everything up. So you can see there's the Minecraft server right now. And it's starting to load all the files that it needs. And it's starting to load the initial world. And in a brief moment, it's going to realize there are no spawn chunks. And so it's going to start preparing spawn in the overworld, in the nether, and in the end. And this is going to take two to three minutes at the most. So see, it can't find a spawn biome. It's going to start creating spawn here in a minute. And if you've been watching in the background, you can see additional files are popping in for the server that you can use to configure it specifically to how you want. Any .yml file you can configure. I am not going to walk you through any of those today. I'm simply going to show you how to get up and running in SlimeFun. There are much better tutorials out there than I can give you. So the server is actually fully up and running. Now, before we go anywhere, we actually need to stop the server because now we need to install SlimeFun. <gasps> no, I don't want to install it. You don't have to do anything but drag the files into one folder, and that is it. It's that simple, okay? So when this is done, this is going to close on its own. So I'm going to close the start file back out. When this has saved all the world chunks, it's going to close all on its own. And then we're going to load the version that doesn't have the graphical user interface. And again, you don't have this being updated, so it probably is, is better for your computer to not have that running. Now, it doesn't mean it's not happening in the background, but you're not seeing it updated as you go in the real world. So I'm going to start my bat file here in just a second. But we, before we do that, we're going to move all the plugins into the plugins folder as soon as we see the server disappear, which is just about there. We're going to grab everything but the paper file. So we're going to grab slime fun and all the add-ins that I've put into this folder so that the server can install them all on its own. So nice, you don't have to do squat. All right, so let's see. We downloaded Soul Jars. Oh, I hate the blue circle of annoyance. Slime Fun, Infinity, Extra Tools, and Exotic Garden. I'm going to try to stop that. There we go. Okay, hopefully, I, the last time I had this, I had to reboot my computer. It's being annoying. But we're going to drag them all to the plugins folder. And it may take a second to update because my computer just does not like me in the evening. Can I actually stop that and get into the folder? There we go. So while that's loading, we're going to actually say goodbye to my YouTube series uh, world. Say goodbye there, Mr. And, uh, Mr. Trader Dude and your llamas, and, and we'll see you later. While the server is loaded, we're going to set it up in my client. So I'm going to add a server and we're going to call this, I don't know, what should we call this? Uh, video test server. And remember that IP address that I asked you to write down? That's my server where my computer is hosted that I'm on right now. So once the server has loaded, we will see zero out of 20. It is still in the process of loading. So we'll give it a second here. We'll go ahead and try to refresh it. 
Slime Fun plugins are being installed the very first time here. So it's going to take just a little bit longer on the very first run. It's also every time you start the server, it's going to look to see if it downloaded a update to any of the versions of the plugins and it will reinstall it. When you close your server, it's going to tell you, you know, restart your server so you can download the most recent version and then you're going to restart it to actually install it. So hopefully it's going to be up here shortly. Dum, da, dum. It's pinging, so that's a good sign. We're almost there. Try it one more time. Now, I have a lot of stuff running on my computer. Hopefully, I've allocated enough memory to the server so it's going to load quick enough. I've got, you know, OBS running in addition to some other stuff in the background and the server. And, you know, all this is going at once here. So, hopefully... All right, this is a test server for Slime Fun. Let's log in and see what we get for the very first time. Hopefully it's going to go smoothly. I'm hoping four gigs in this computer is enough and it actually loads. I said it may go a little slow. Hey, look at that. We've got part of the world. <laughs> I always love chunk loading. Let's kind of go into this version. Okay. So I can move around a little bit. Uh, there we go. All right. We've got slime fun. We've got the guide. And as you can see, everything for me is locked. It's lagging just a little bit yet. It's still catching up. Again, if I had OBS running, this would not be an issue. But you can see I'm clearly in a survival world for slime fun. Chunks are still kind of loading. Once I shut down OBS, this shouldn't be an issue. And hopefully this video is not lagging for you guys. Um, but we've got the slime fun server up and running. That's it. That's all it takes to get your server up and going, guys. So uh, I will be more than happy to answer any question that I covered in this video, but anything beyond the scope is probably beyond my level of expertise. But right now on your home network, you can load a server and everybody in your house can join. Now, what you do with it, how well that server will run, will be up to you. Again, if you've got a computer running 16 gigs or better is the ideal. Uh, just to give you an idea, my YouTube series is on an 8-year-old Dell Optiplex 3010. Unfortunately, I timed out because I've got just too many demands uh, on my computer right now. So this one's on an 8-year-old computer. It has 16 gigabytes of RAM and a G4770 graphics card. And it does pretty good. Yeah, he just wanted to make a cameo appearance. So again, you know, we got disconnected simply because I've just got too much running on this computer. It just couldn't keep up. But I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you learned something. Um, and by the way, if you do have two computers where you can dedicate one for the server, make sure you run IP config on the server that you're going to, on the computer that you're going to host the server on, not yours. Also, just a couple other things with Slime Fun. All the plugins are by default set to auto update. So every time you close your server and restart it, it downloads the newest version. Then every time you close it and restart it again, it'll install that version. So you don't even have to worry about it. What if you want to add more plugins after the fact? Exact same thing. Download the jar file, put it in a plugins folder after you've stopped your server, and then restart it. It's that simple. Guys, thanks for watching. I hope you appreciate it. Uh, we'll see you soon. And don't forget, go to work or go home. We'll see you later. These guys always try to make. Traders.